today we've got another swing report video for you that's the mizuno stg 220 driver this thing is loaded with adjustable features we're going to test it out today get our quick first feedback from thomas and tell you guys everything you need to know uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel also give this video a like and leave a comment give us your thoughts on the stg 220 driver and of course skip to the end in that final chapter of the video for our final thoughts on this driver Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol with Second Swing Golf and I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. And today we're out on the driving range. We've got a new driver uh, from Mizuno, the STG 220 driver. Um, it looks awesome. I love the look of that, kind of that like carbon crown. It's not like, it's, it's glossy a little bit, but not like too shiny. Um, and, and Mizuno, for what it's worth, Thomas, they've been stepping up their, their driver game over the past three, four years. I know you think of Mizuno Golf, you think of those forged irons, right? But they've really stepped up the driver game, and this STG 220, it's kind of a, it, it, we, we gotta see how it fits in, because the STZ, STZ, STX, excuse me, have their own kind of performance attributes. This one almost can get, you can go a lot of different ways with the adjustability on this one. Right, you, get, you said, you gotta see where it fits in. Well, it can fit in anywhere, because of <laughs> exactly. the adjustable options we've got. We've got, you got three different options here with regards to adjustable weights on the mm -hmm. back of, and the back of the club. You got the uh, loft sleeve that you, you can do. go plus or minus two degrees each way. Yep. And the, these weights you can put in the toe, you can put on the heel, you can put in the back. And a lot of other manufacturers have been slowly going away from the adjustable mm -hmm. options here too. So it's really interesting that Mizuno has been stepping up their game, but they're also bringing this driver here that's got multiple adjustable options. Right, right. That's the thing I, that's important to bring up, I think, is, um, you know, it seems like kind of the adjustable weighting on drivers is slowly kind of either um, it's becoming less pronounced on the back of drivers or they're kind of fading away altogether. And now Mizuno's really bringing this option in, which is geared towards those players that still do want that adjustable weighting in the back and that do like to play around with that. And so you get a ton of those options here and we'll, we'll be sure on the channel to do a kind of an in-depth comparison and, and play with these weighting systems and um, see you know how much that effect is with Thomas here. We'll do that here in the future. Um, but today we'll get some quick first thoughts, quick feedback on kind of the standard setting there. Um, and then we'll get into some of the tech. But looking at that club, Thomas, other than the adjustable weight stuff on there, what do you see from kind of uh, uh, you know putting it down in the dress? What do you, what do you like about that? Yeah, it's a, it's a clean, compact looking club. It's, you know, and it's not max, max imp game improvement or anything like that. It's mm -hmm. just a clean looking players club look down at a dress. Looks really good. I, you talked about that black finish and not too shiny. Definitely looks like there's not going to be too much of a glare outside as well. Yeah. So very clean looking club. I like it. Mm -hmm. I'm at first glance, I'm really impressed with it. Yeah. I mean, looking at some of the tech here, you've got a sort of a modern player's profile where it's not it's not like super compact like you said it's also not like outrageously you know huge to look down at either it's kind of a, a mix of it, of them both um, also coming back from other drivers is Mizuno's kind of beta titanium face um, which has been super explosive and it's kind of it's a different material compared to you know most drivers out there um, and then you've got as we'll talk about and we'll mention over and over but uh, the dual weight slots on the back plus the one in the far rear of there um, creates so many adjustability options there that we'll get to in a, in a future video. But um, then talking on stock shaft, so what we've got here, Project X Hazardous Smoke Black RDX. It's kind of a low spin profile there, but you also have the Motorway XF3 as well as an option. And then your stock grip is Lambton, Lambkin, excuse me, ST. So um, you got, you know, some pretty good uh, other materials thrown in with this driver as well. So Mizuno, um, a, just a crazy good option to be thrown out there for golfers because in, the in theory it could fit anybody depending on those options. But um, I'm excited to see the testing here with the standard setting and get some numbers compared to your gamer. Yeah, and then for today's initial swing report here, we're, we're not going to be playing around with adjustability. As I mentioned, we will do that in a mm -hmm. future video very soon. But we've got the nine degree head in the standard setting. The weights are just in the standard setting in, mm -hmm. in the back here, not all the way back, just in the mm -hmm. standard setting. And as you mentioned, we've got the Hazardous RDX small shaft. All right, well, you ready to hit some tee shots? Well, let's do it. Wow. 
Just shot out of a cannon. That's right at the target. Turned over a little bit more there, but. I feel like the spin stayed pretty low on that too, though. Yeah. That one could have some good chase out numbers here. See, that one is also 20 20 for spin. So, I think both of those have been relatively low ball flights compared to, I guess, what I'm used to seeing from right. you. Right. Know. What was like carry distance? Like two 277 for both. Okay, so I'm sacrificing a little bit, maybe. Yeah. That was hit better. That's good. More that height on that one. Spin stays down on that one. That's. Oh, that flew a lot further. Yeah, that did. <laughs> Yep, that one carried another eight yards, 285 that time. Not too bad. So now with three shots in, what do you feel? And, you know, it's, it's kind of sound and feel feedback. I know this is it's a new driver, haven't hit it before, haven't heard the sound before. What do you think? I feel power. That's <laughs> what, what I feel. I, yeah. I, it feels really good off the face. I like to hear uh, that. That's usually a good thing if you feel power when right. you hit that driver. <laughs> <The> driver. <laughs> power is a good thing. Another one that's just going kind of right through that wind. Yeah, it's, a bit it's of kind of a it. piercing flight with it, that's for sure. So I'm kind of waiting, you know, you see, you know, we've, you know, you hit drivers out here into a wind like this. This is probably a, what, 15 mile an hour breeze, 10 right. mile, 15 mile an hour breeze yeah, into 10, us. You kind of see that ball balloon and kind of go everywhere. But it has not. Ones, yeah. It hasn't done that yet. It has not. This has been, this has been really good stuff. Left that one just a little right. Ever so slightly, but that's still a fairway finder, if you ask me. Yep, I would uh, I would take that one as a slight miss hit. That, that one's good. Well. Yep. That one's launched. And I watched your tee flip up over end over end here, so. Yeah, it's uh, it feels solid off the face. It's definitely not loud. It's just no. like kind of like a, a muted solid feel, uh, with power. It feels like there's some power behind it. Yeah, I mean that's a really good ball. That's a baby little fade on that one. You know, he carried it two eighty seven point six. I think that was the farthest carry of the day with that one. That one was ripped. Yeah, I'm I'm impressed with this. This has felt. I mean, that's six shots, right? Yep, that's six shots. We can kind of look at the numbers here. Um, I'm impressed with the spin consistency quite a bit. So you had the one where you kind of maybe hit, I don't want to say a pull hook, that'd be a very mean term for what that right. was. It was kind of just a low draw. Um, that was 1598. Otherwise, everything is between 1936 and 2276. Um, I know the one that was 2276 was kind of an open face that you were expecting the spin to jump up quite a bit and it really didn't. So. Yeah. That's, uh, that's impressive there. On average, carry was 281.6, total 309.7. Your club speed was 110.9 and your ball speed was 163.4. So this is some pretty good. Yeah. It's a chilly day. For, you know, you're not yeah. going to be swinging at your 115 that you can get to sometimes right. indoor with your speed training. 110.9 in the cold today, it's probably 50s in the, in the temperature. That's pretty good. Yep. And you're still hitting the ball 310 yards. 310 with 100, 110 mile an hour club speed. I would take that in a, in a heartbeat. I don't know if I've tested that wow in a, in, a, in a while with that little amount of club speed so it's, i know it's cold I mean, it, was, it was very efficient and that spin yeah. i mean it's, so in total the spin on average was 1987. so just sub 2000 which i think is for you a pretty darn good spot to be in um, and this is again now the other question is you know how much better could these numbers get if you were to play around with these adjustable settings whether it's on the hosel whether it's on the weight tracks and really optimize it for your swing yeah and i think the other thing with optimizing it too is I love to do it in an environment where there's like no wind into me. Yeah. Because I, I feel like I'm kind of fighting because I, I know I want to. Kind of mentally maybe yeah, swinging mentally. down a little bit more to try to keep it out of the wind. Yeah. Possibly. But there was a couple there I, I tried to hit a little higher and it just looked like that ball just kind of kept going through the, mm -hmm. through the air. And that ball was not affected by the wind at all. So right. I'm impressed with this. Uh, there's definitely a future video to be done with this. Yeah. Uh, for and sure. also. It's, it's up there with one of the best drivers in 2021. Yeah, that was, I mean, I'm very impressed just by how consistent the shots were for you. You know, it wasn't anything where if you missed it slightly and it kind of, I mean, you had the one where you kind of left it open and didn't quite catch it perfect. It's, the spin went up by what, 100, 
200 right. RPM, yeah. and it still flew 300 and I think seven yards um, was the was well, the when, total distance. Total distance, yeah. So that's that's impressive to me. And like we've said, Mizuno has been up in their game. The ST series of drivers really went back to ST 190, then 200, then they had this year with the STZ and STX. They added the G here, uh, which they kind of stands for the, the gravity adjustability. They say you yep. adjust that center of gravity towards the back and you can play around with all those settings. And that's the nice thing about this driver, man. It's powerful, but then we're just scratching the surface on what it can do. Yeah, it looks good, it feels good, it performs, and there is potential for even better adjustable purposes. So I give it, uh, yeah, I give it an A plus for sure. It's got some future potential there. So Thomas, the Mizuno ST G220 driver. Um, some really good feedback from you after hitting six shots and getting a ton of consistency out of those right away. Um, and again, given the, num the, the swing speed number that you're able to generate in kind of the cold weather today, still hitting at 310 yards on average with total distance, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, it felt so good off the face. Yeah. Um, not only did the numbers, you know, show that it was it was going nice and far and straight, but it, it, it felt really good. And I'm looking at the face here and I, you know, I, it just felt good. It was, it was, it was a good setup for me. Yeah. Um, speaking of setups, you know, nice thing with this driver, you talk about what, who's, who's it for exactly? Yeah. Well, it could be for quite a, a wide range it of could, golfers yeah. essentially there too. It's for that golfer that doesn't want to be maybe tied into just a driver that you can't adjust. So you've got your, your three adjustable holes yep. essentially on the, on the back of the club. You can put that forward, you can put it, put it back. Yep. Um, you also got adjustability with the, with the loft as mm -hmm. well. So there's, it's for that golf that maybe likes to tinker a little bit, but yeah. also it's for the club fitter that yeah. really wants to get that go golfer dialed in. And that's right. really who it's really for. It is, because, I mean, and that's the thing that I think is cool and you think about it this way, like if, there are, if you're a golfer that you don't like spending money for a driver, in a way, this is a good one to get because you get, in a way, like a, a lot of different drivers in one when you can adjust it all those different ways. And so, you know, for the golfer that generates a ton of spin, right? Put those weights forward you drop that spin and there you got the one that's fit for you yep. if you're someone that needs more launch and more spin you put those weights in that far, that far back kind of rear track there and then you get that extra launch extra spin so there's a bunch of options with that driver and again in that future video we'll find out exactly how much of a difference that can that can really make but um that's the nice thing about this is who's it for well pretty much every golfer out there um, which is really cool to see and then one other thing i want to touch on is Stock driver length of 45 inches is generally a little shorter than kind of maybe other uh, manufacturers out there. Um, maybe what's your insight on, on having that stock like that 45 versus 45 and three quarters, for example, and um, you know maybe the advantages it does give you or the disadvantages? I think the disadvantage is I, my club speed was at 110.9. One, one yeah. Uh, that may be a little bit of a disadvantage. My driver length that I play is 45 and a half inches, so okay. it is half an inch longer. Um, but the advantage is right here yeah that's the advantage um so playing a little shorter shaft you're going to hit the middle of the club face middle of the club face equals more ball speed and we all know more ball speed is going to equal more distance so it's not always about trying to play the longest golf shaft you can possibly play to try and generate more distance in the day you want to hit the ball straight mm -hmm. but you want to hit it far as well and then you're getting ball speed distance out of the club face design but also the fact that you're mm -hmm can control it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had some really good performance and consistent ball speeds too from that beta titanium face um, from as you know there. Um, and then again, we'll, we'll I'm, I'm really excited for that future video to, to dial in those different weight settings, um, put both of them in the back, put them both up as far as possible, bring them both in the heel or both. In the, I mean, there's so many different ways you can go about that. And that's not even touching the adjustable hosel either. Right. So um, a lot of different ways to go with this club. And that's Again, why I say if you don't want to be purchasing a driver every few years, this one could last a while just because of all the different settings that there are. So golfers interested in the Mizuno STG220 driver, uh, you know where to go. You know where to get fit. That's Second Swing Golf, either in our five, one of our five store locations or at secondswing.com. We'll take care of you. One of our experts will dial you in and tell you which setting to start with and then also tell you what these other settings all will do for your game. So, Thomas, thank you for joining today, uh, providing your feedback. I think this is going to be a really good option here the rest of 2021 and in 2022. Yeah, Mizuno has stepped up their game again. <laughs>